so you can hear better, and you can uh, we can hear when you ask your questions. I'm Rick Stoll. I'm uh, from the University of Nebraska, and uh, and I'm the leadership team for the LPLC. I welcome back you back here. We had a a good uh, first half of the morning session on manure treatment, and hopefully, uh, I fully expect the second half will be just as good. Uh, had good good attendance. I see people coming in. Just a couple of reminders. Uh, first off, if you are looking for professional development hours or CEUs, uh, remember to sign up or to get the form appropriate to your uh, your needs or your purpose. <coughs> the other thing is um, uh, these two sessions and actually the digester sessions, uh, part of the sponsorship from the manure <coughs> project management uh, for nutrient re reuse is uh, going towards sponsoring these sessions. So I uh, want to make you aware of that project and a uh, project that just started and uh, will be going on for uh, another four years after this year. So with that, I'm going to just, uh, introduce our first speaker, uh, Mr. Peter Wright from Cornell. Thank you. So I am Peter Wright and uh, our current coach, which you already saw, is uh, also the business. They came to us with this technology. They said, oh, we want to have this blood wave. That's an interesting technology, but it's the latest thing. We will look into that. Um, so, uh, manure spreading has always been a problem in farms. Uh, it's a chore. It's something that they have to do. Uh, but things have changed. So what we used to do, we don't do anymore for many different reasons. And also, farms are getting bigger and bigger. Um, this really doesn't show this as the average one. A lot of farms are between 500,000 and 1,000 cows in that range. And if they get that big, they have to expand their, their area that they function in, which makes the manure spreading even worse. And so it's different people, different places, and different further. And it's certainly costing you a lot of money. So is there a possibility that you can actually reduce the pollen cost by uh, cleaning out the water, giving them the cows, um, and to become more efficient at that? The bigger you get, bigger, bigger storages. It becomes a, uh, a monumental task to uh, organize this, get the spreading done in a timely manner. So again, if you can reduce how much you spread, uh, that would be a good thing. The farms recognize this. They're uh, excited to do what is right and not have water quality issues. But the time of year when they go at it, it's a narrow window. So again, there's a pressure to reduce the amount of spreading that they might do. Um, also. Can we get some very specific equipment that might help us get out here earlier, maybe, uh, with equipment? And, uh, but the spreading process has inherent risks. So again, they don't want to be on the road. They don't want to be subject to the issues that could occur, major relations and regulations and stuff like that that could happen as, as they're out the site. So we've already talked about different systems that we might put in place, and um, the systems Many, many choices, and there's opportunities all around. But uh, one way is okay, can we do some kind of gasification? Uh, do some sin mass, do some mass, and then separate it into groups of thousands that might get ash. And here's a, uh, a liquid that might be more easily applied. So that was the idea. Um, those of you that are familiar with uh, thermodynamics, though, the laws have not changed. Now we ran into significant issues in trying to deal with this. Um, but our farm, uh, we picked a likely farm that was uh, very interested in reducing the manure spreading costs. But they also were going to expand, or thinking about expanding. The milking project uh, is, is large enough to have more cows, but they recognized that if they had more cows, they needed more land, or if they had uh, more land, they could go further. They were nervous about the how we might spread. This technology help them. So, of course, as they go for more cows, um, there's more total manure, they need more acres, there's going to be double, more loads that they have to do, and they're going to have to go a little further. Uh, this is what they have now one way average, where some are right next to the farm and some are, are out by ways, even now. And uh, this is based on not, oh, this is what the field you need to get, because they can't really predict that. Based on a, a, uh, a new field, an average is six miles one way out. Um, they're already going further than six miles, so you can't even make how that might actually be. 
Um, right now they're spending, well, this was 2016, that's what they spent, $217,000 per year to spread some more. And at those prices, with the addition of more, they were going to go to 333000 But also the risk of the bubble and the asset was going on too. So we're considering the time and time. Um, interestingly, uh, some of the close fields have got very little manure. I'm going to surprise they've already been saturated with nutrients. Um, so the little amount of manure and close, um, very, there's reasonable to spread manure. The further fields that need more manure uh, cost a lot. Um, so there's quite a range that they can the fields, what, what they cost. So what we got is the uh, comprehensive nutrient management plan reference. They had the specific fields with the specific acres, and they had this was the specific method that they used, the equipment they used to do that. And of course, they had the specific uh, spreading rate. And from the farm, uh, the farm estimated the operating season. So we have a little debate on that because the farm says, oh, if it's 20 miles an hour, that we certainly have witnessed the cost of having moved. But they said that that was the average, so there is a variable. What we did then, <coughs> Figure out, okay, so here's the life path. Have that draw out how they would go by road. Um, and then you, on the equipment, we came up with the capital cost and operating cost going through your you know, the used equipment that they would buy, and so what the repairs would be, and the operating cost. And, that. and again, I told you the new field, we just assumed that they already got six miles. So here's their equipment, and uh, here's, here's what they'll do. Thousand uh, uh, gallons, or uh, down here the, the pump. They have a drag post system that they use, so that's using thousand gallons per minute. And uh, this is what the uh, arm told us. Uh, the width they also told us is what it was. And we calculated these going through. Um, here's what a used equipment cost is, and uh, the life, and, and that kind of thing. And came up with those numbers. Um, the farm also told us. This is all the equipment they use. This is a, uh, a custom person that comes in to do this, but the rest of it is the equipment that they have. So, of course, again, the, the farm wants to move towards sustainability, so they want to uh, reduce their hauling costs, and this is what they do. But, by the way, they produce byproducts, and, of course, this thing's got to be economically feasible. Um, to take the uh, tension out of the room, obviously, Telling you that it's not economically Sorry, it's how this works. I mean, the, the process works, but not economically. Here's the process you uh, load manure in here. The key to this is it's got to be at least 25% solids in order to have the energy, uh, uh, actually, 25% of the neutral energy uh, out of it. So, what we used was 30%. What we had to do ahead of time is add a solid separation process. And of course, when we know that, oh, we can't put all of it more in there. We can only put what we've separated out. You see that? Uh, made a big difference right there. Now, basically, the, the manure goes in. Uh, they uh, devolatilization it, which really turns it into a slurry char. And then they bring it up here and add heat. Um, they gasify it. Uh, that produces heat. Uh, they recover the heat through this loop. That does supply all the energy that they need, and there is spare energy. Uh, so there's sin gas that is released, there's steam that's high uh, temperature steam that's released, that's released, and a whole lot of low, uh, low, low temperature heat. And unfortunately, what are you going to do with that? Uh, not very much. So that really is a very efficient solution. So they pressurize it, they create heat, they go through this process. Gasify it with a heat exchange, and then their products, the byproducts are sin fuel, um, ash, and heat. Uh, so, uh, those byproducts, and they make as much value out of that as they for the uh, capital cost. And, uh, and of course, they're, they're hoping for a reduced mass. If I didn't, if didn't reduce the mass that much, it was sin fuel with a solid portion of the uh, manure. Um, also, they have uh, sand for bedding on their high-efficient cows. Um, so sand goes through a solid separate.
prayer. And as well, both Samuel through the uh, Pages of this no longer. So um, that, that's a history. We're going to have to change out of that, and uh, will they lose production? That's something they have to deal with. Um, I told you about this, and you know that Gary Nemore uh, is a lot wetter, so that's part of their issue. When we talk about the heat, it's impossible to make it useful when we put a value on that. Um, the ash sales are very interesting. They think that we had ideas with the ash. They said, oh, don't worry, there's some slime products in this one industry that will pay $600 a ton for us. Does anybody believe that? This is what we have for the process. They go. And not only that, there's no slime or surgery for slime products. Okay, so um, we, we had to bring them way back out of that. And this is a prologue of the moment that they were able to get them out of that. They were excited about that. Also, the process of what you can achieve nitrogen from. You're going to use nitrogen. It's on the balance of forage, and so it does have a, a value to the nitrogen on that farm. So, um, I'm pretty sure fans should pay us a lot of money for that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is just the picture I have, and there you have it. The first thing you have to separate out is the sound. So, then what we came up with is uh, what would give it a break in price? And, and the real problem is, is the technology would cost a million dollars. That's the technology capital cost is actually very expensive. Uh, so what would make a break-even price on that is actually if they got the technology for free. Is that possible? Well, you're laughing, but in some ways there are grants out there with new technology that are so, oh, you know, try this. So, so we said, you know, that is one thing, but you have to have all of them. To give you great detail. Uh, and, and this is leaving everything else in, in the country. And we, we did the same thing for the electric bus. We're, we're, we're going to generate electricity from the uh, syndicates and also from the steam. And it's going to run steam to a, a, a generator system as well. And uh, we figured it would break even if we could get uh, 15 cents a kilowatt. Uh, if only we were in Vermont. And we could, but we can't get 16 cents. But if we could, uh, then it, it, it could break in. Uh, the hauling cost, which was the original, it, it really just doesn't make it because you can't shove all the manure through there. There's still left. There's 80% of the manure that you've got to handle the separated liquid, which is still going to handle uh, that demand. So it, actually, to make that break even, you would have to be spending $2,530 per load. And nobody does that. Did you can haul that for months, 20 miles down the trip. So we know we can do it. Um, the ash sales, again, it, it, we can get $374 a ton from miners. That will break even. And, and, and again, all this is, is, well, there you have it. And of course, this is uh, disappointing to them. We did then a very, uh, we looked at each component. This doesn't even list them all, but we looked at each component and said, what's a reasonable number to put in for each component? And when we did that for the 1,500 cows, we said it would be a, a, a negative annual uh, uh, annual benefits minus the cost of the department of health, minus $262 million per year. That's a significant number. We, we wanted to look at it a little closer and say, you know, what, uh, which are the big ones? And of course, the, one of the biggest ones is the, uh, the capital cost. So the, the inventor, you know, where did he come up with a million dollars? Not real sure. So he said, well, maybe he would come up with something less than that. So he dropped it by a quarter. And you can see that it, it did then drop by about a quarter on the price. So changing this one from Million dollars, seven hundred twenty thousand for the capital cost would uh, change the value to instead of minus uh, two hundred and sixty one thousand, it would be minus two hundred thousand. Uh, still not going to make it. And, and we went on down through, and you can see the percentages of each one on how it, how it might uh, might impact it. Um, 
they've lost opportunity costs is a big one, the value of that money. And you know, at that time, we were saying that the farm could find uh, return on their money of 10% someplace on the farm. So if we put that in, but if they only get, uh, they only get the three. Yeah, right there. So um, only uh, three percent. That was a huge amount. And, you know, it really is reflected that the huge capital cost that Barbara helped our agency have to have their on the case for it over 20 years. And I think we uh, we said 20 years, but it was 25 years, and you get some reduction in cost by the way. So you look down through here, and it's the cost of the money and uh, and the uh, cost of the actual equipment. Then they were uh, go on, uh, continue this uh, graph and on down, and these are on farm issues. And we uh, we said to do the analysis, we said there will be no change in uh, production taking away the sand. But it certainly is possible that we will be uh, we might get seven pounds per cow reduction, and uh, we can see that and we'll get on the water check. The large the loss of nitrogen uh, the electric price was also big. We were saying oh, we're going to get five cents for it, and we're even be optimistic. So we could go to seven cents in the next So again, the minus 261, if we get uh, seven cents, we're only be minus uh, 200 pounds. So uh, on we went. And then, um, the value of the ash, again, is a huge one. And we said that's probably zero. They were saying that it might be as much as 300, and you can see that that really would be a pain in the ass because we have to sell it for $300 a pound. Now you're only minus 550 pounds, which is still a very common type of market. So that was for the 1,500 cows, and uh, we did the same thing for the 2,500, which is really where they were headed. And uh, again, the uh, Annual uh, uh, benefits minus the cost up to the negative uh, almost $400,000. So, uh, not the solution that they were looking for. And uh, the fact that she could repeat the same thing can we reduce the capital cost? Can we um, change the cost of the money? And uh, that would benefit the farm would be the same way. And the, um, as long as you didn't reduce the no production, you know, that would be a, a, a terrible thing. And then right down here again for the ash. And you can see this supposedly gives you the sensitivity of how much each thing impacts going from one, uh, one variable to another variable. There's several variables we didn't put in here um, insurance, areas of organic matter, commodities, organic matter. So there's other values and variables that are involved here. So, Reduction of manure hauling is not the driver. So it's gasifying the solid portion of manure, say 106 loads, and really that's only about 13,000 dollars a year. Um, at 150, and then it's probably come on and it's say 20,000 a year. So there's no way that this technology is going to impact on that. Um, there is plenty of low grade heat. So there's uh, 7 million BTUs. Come up with some other enterprise that they really have to work and it all comes down to you can't sell the ash and the cash cost at the same time. So it might be better for farms without sand bedding, it might be better in a dry climate, and uh, with arid conditions would drive them hard for you. Uh, you could get the heat benefits, uh, use them on other farms where you could. Why aren't they doing some poultry manure? I don't know, that would take place. There may be synergies. There's a whole lot of variables, like you got to evaluate the whole system. Uh, during the North Sea wet, uh, the byproducts are not maintenance in this case, and so we are still looking for an ideal manure management system. 
any questions. We've got time for one or two questions. Yeah, uh, Pete, uh, it looks like you were comparing just a single digit one variable, what impact that would have. It, was, was there uh, okay. all, all, all the variables? I didn't have that. If you did optimistic on all those variables, it would come out the top of But I didn't. That's kind of wishful thinking. So we didn't go that far. We assumed it would be organic. Okay. So they will actually take a fresh dairy manure and call it organic in the survey. And so then we ask if you not do organic because it's a problem. Okay. That, that, that's their estimation. Yeah. And, and with your hungry. The value they were going to get uh, wasn't related to it being uh, organic. Uh, where they were in. Oh, and I didn't show that in here, but the, the technology provider will sort of do all the whole map. And that's in there for $25,000 per year. And not doing that. And that's a small incremental recount. All right, so let's thank uh, Pete.